Brrra! Spice is in the house, my people! And today you will experience 6 out of work here stories. We're 100 subs away from 3000 subscribers, so please go ahead and support me if you care about what I do. I am currently debating to do a giveaway for 5000, 7000, or 10,000 subscribers. Feel free to drop some fires in the comments to show your support to the Spicy Gang and like this video if you're having fun with me. Let me know if you subscribe in the comments so I can show you some love. Congratulations, Brenda, for the comment of the day. Brrra. No, I can't sell you fish. But yes, of course, I will sell you out. I am a regular at my local pet smart. I have a few fish tanks and constantly feel like ogling the betas and all the fish they have. So I am usually in the fish and reptile corner. It is the closest thing our city has for an aquarium. And the best part is that all the exhibits are for sale. Towards the end of August, all of the colleges in our area start their fall semester. Also, around this time, all of the college kids think they want a beta, but don't want to spend money on proper care. For those not in the aquarium hobby, there are 5 things you need for a healthy fish. Good water quality, good tank size, good temperature, good hiding spots, and good filtration. Notice I didn't say happy there fish keepers. Put the pitchforks away. I am simplifying it for everyone else. However, most of the time, people just toss them in a small, unheated, non-filtered tank and call that good enough. Sure, they're going to live, but they will die a lot sooner than if they were taken care of properly. Usually, the PetSmart employees in my area are really good about this, but they can only help if they catch someone before they leave. On the surface, fish keeping looks simple. It is just a box of water, right? So people who think they know what to do are common. I was unfortunate enough to come in on a college move-in day. College kids buying tiny, unfiltered, unheated tanks and their poor sacrifice to go in them. I go hide with the sish lids, feeling sad as I watch beta after beta go to their inevitable doom. Did you hear me? I said I want that one. A guy shoved his face in mine and it takes all of my self-control not to instinctively punch him. Startled, I respond with the most appropriate thing my dad could come up with. Huh? The what? That one? He shouts pointing at the foot long koi in a display tank. Like an idiot, I respond with, how big is your tank? 20 gallons. Now, for those of you who are not avid fish keepers, here's a general rule of thumb. One inch of fish equal one gallon of water. Now, ignore that rule entirely when it comes to goldfish and koi. Big koi need at least 75 gallons at minimum. Even PetSmart honors this rule. My brain is still shut down and I am running on autopilot. That's not big enough, I say. I'm buying the fish, just give it to me. At this point, my brain finishes booting and I realize that he thinks I am an employee. Granted, Black t-shirts do look a lot like blue polos, so maybe he was just confused. I don't work here, you should go talk to one of the associates. QD, why else would you be in the fish section? Give me your manager, you're mistreating a customer. An associate comes over and interrupts him, and he starts railing on her. We can only sell koi for tanks of 75 gallons or more, the associate states, completely ignoring him. What size tank is it? You told me 20. I say just as he says, 75. I'm sorry, but we can sell you koi today, she says. He lives in a huff. But ladies and gentlemen, this day was not over yet. Apparently, no one else had figured out that I was not working there. I was questioned by a mischief of college students about proper care for their betas. They were polite and receptive to proper better care, so I actually helped them pick out their supplies stating numerous times that I did not work there. They didn't seem to get it, but that was fine since they were super polite. They ended up much poorer, but with betas that would probably live through all of their college career. After this, I started chatting with a few of the staff. One of the new hires, whom I had not seen before, invited all of us to the break room. Sure, I think, slightly confused. In the back room, he tossed me a blue polo and said, Hey, put this on or the manager will yell at you. I don't work here. The associate stared at me. Come on, this is some kind of hazing ritual. No one but associates should be helping people on the floor. No, seriously, I don't work here. Screw you, I'm talking to the manager about your uniform. We talked to the manager. And that was when the day went from strange to surreal. I've got your uniform, John Doe. So that's why you didn't have yours. I'm not John Doe. You are too. Me, sick of everything 
pulling out my driver's license. I am this guy. I don't work for Petsmart. Awkward silence. You want to work for Petsmart? No thanks. I don't work here and I am armed. I've been watching a ton of videos about this subreddit lately, so I decided to take the plunge and sign up so I could share my experience. I am often mistaken for a Walmart employee, but this level only happened once. I was confused for a Walmart employee like 4 years after I quit in a store I never worked in while wearing tanned 5.11 tactical pants, my duty belt and tight holster with my sidearm in it a green polo and ballistic vest with giant reflective letters that said security. I was there getting a sandwich because I didn't want gas station food and Taco Bell was the only place near me I could eat while at work and it was closed. So while driving between client properties, I stopped in to get food. Once I got back to the deli, some couple, yep, Karen and her husband, approached me and demanded I go and check in the bag for a bookshelf. I just looked at them and walked away. I get up front to buy my food. And there they are, screaming at a poor customer service manager who had no idea what was going on. Karen's husband then sees me and like a real idiot, approaches me and got inside my personal space to start yelling at me. Remember what I said I was wearing? Yeah, a loaded gun, a can of OC spray, a baton, but no taser. I'm not certified to use one, nor do I own one. The works. At this point, the dude drew the attention of the store's contracted security guard. Poor unharmed security guard walks up to see what's going on. Before anyone can say anything else, I told her to stay back and call the police. Guy hears the word police and he turned and ran out of the store. Meanwhile, Karen is still yelling at the poor customer service manager. I pay for my food and call my boss to tell him I'm going to be off all sites for a while and what just happened. Cops showed up about 2 minutes after the call because the store security told them some guy was screaming at an armed security guy and they were worried he might get himself shot. 2 weeks later, I am on our problem site one that had been robbed 4 times under our care. We were not incompetent, they hit when we were off duty. It's like 1 in the morning and I've parked the car in a line of used cars and cut the lights and engine to watch the spot of the property where the break-ins occurred. And who do I see looking at cars? Karen and her husband. So first thing I do, call my boss at like 1 in the morning and tell him who I see. I was told to call the police and then get them off the lot. So I called the sheriff's office because they are literally 4 minutes down the road from where I was at and the police were about 20. And when a deputy showed up, I slid over to that side of the lot and told her the whole story from 2 weeks prior. Then we made our approach. I initiated contact, told them I remembered them and hoped they were fine from the other night. And then firmly told them they could not be on the lot outside of normal business hours and that they had to leave. Karen flips out and starts screaming. Her husband, clearly very agitated, stumps towards me. At that point, my side arm came out of the holster and I went into myself from my main job, which was a correctional officer. I went from the nicest guy in the world to I am about to make you bite the curb faster than you can blink, like Dark Helmet to Dark Vader. The deputy pops out to my right taser out and laser bounced around the guy's chest. Karen screamed and backed off. Once the deputy came out, I got quiet and let her give the comments. After all, I'm just a security guy. She is the actual law enforcement officer. Dude sees he's about to be tased and possibly shot, so he complied with her commands. Both of them went to jail that night for misdemeanor trespassing. And no, those two were not the thieves from the theft mentioned earlier. They were just trying to look at cars without a salesman harassing them. They're just stupid. Those guys were cut a month later when they stole a Porsche that had a GPS tracker in it. That is also the most excitement I've had as a security guard. Most nights, I just try to stay awake and not eat too much. 300 to 215 pounds. An SV, I don't work here lady, I'm not calling for help. 20 years ago, I would constantly get out of work your lady at least once a week, no matter what store I happen to be in. One store I'd visit Lee frequently enough, I would simply answer people's question. Then life happened. I became a bigger guy and stopped taking as good of care of myself and I guess I became less approachable. Well, in the last 7 months, I have dropped 85 pounds and started dressing better. So today, 
I walked into a big box bulk item store where all employees wear a bright blue vest. I am wearing a company shirt with my company name on it. The shirt is mostly dark gray with black specks. Nowhere near a blue vest in color. As I am walking along, I have this guy look at me and mumble something. I say, excuse me? He pipes up a little and asked, Would you uh, c call someone to help me load this? It was plant products of some sort. I simply replied with, Sorry, I don't work here. Then, in unison, we both looked down the aisle and here comes a blue vest. So I continued on my way. Not too terribly exciting of a story, but for me, it is a huge NSV that it appears I am approachable again. So there's a good chance I will be back with more stories later. I'm not sure but I think an SSV is a non-scale victory. So feel free to rectify me or to correct what NSV means in the comments. That would, that would be nice, I would appreciate it. And if you made it this far to this video, well, please consider subscribing because that will be one of the three ways that you can support me. Otherwise, you can leave a like and you can also leave a comment. But even if you do nothing and you just watch my video, I still love you, so keep on watching. Let's get to the next story. Red shirts work here. This just happened. I am browsing an art supply store for parts for my airbrush, looking rather lost because all the older employees are busy. Now the entitled idiot. <clears throat> I continue looking for the parts. <clears throat> huh? What? Where are the sheets of construction paper? Sorry, what? Where are the sheets of construction paper? Sorry, but I don't work here. I don't know. You are wearing a red shirt. The employees also wore red shirts, but had the company logo on. Mines is just blank. Obviously, you work here. Where is the construction paper? I don't know. I don't work here, lady. I'm just as lost as you. Though, if I had to guess, I would probably get help sooner than you with that attitude. How dare you? How dare you talk to a paying customer like that? I'm taking you to your manager. She literally grabbed me and tried to drag me to the front counter. Lady, get your hands off me. Unless you like to sit inside courtrooms in front of a judge for assault and harassment. Long story short, the lady just stood there screaming swear words at me until one of the store employees came to investigate the commotion. One of the most entitled people I've ever seen. What he looks like he works in Target. My two friends and I went to Target to pick up a few things for their dorm. I was dressed in a red Hugo Boss polo khakis in a gray hoodie with my university's name on it. My friends were looking at something while I was standing at the end of the aisle. I was on my phone looking something up. A kid, looked around 10 or 12, came up to me and asked if I worked there. I said no and realized that I looked like I worked in Target. He said, damn and was walking away. I zip up my hoodie as my friend starts cracking up. They are laughing since I am dressed like I work at Target, but this kid thought they were laughing at him. He yells, what? He looks like he works at Target. He then goes on to describe my outfit. My friends and I left him as his mom was telling him not to make a scene. Ah, poor kid, I feel bad for the kid. He was young and most likely self-conscious. But I love the fact that you had to tell us you were wearing a Hugo Boss polo. I do not work at this campsite. I just had two I don't work here in one week. For the first, I was camping in Canada and it was late evening. I was wearing jeans, a sweatshirt, a baseball cap and I am camping gross. I went to the bathroom at the camping site before bed. As I entered the bathroom, an older lady asked if I worked there. I replied that I did not with a bit of a laugh. Do campsites have employees that wander around? Will they be dressed like gross campers? I assume they will have some sort of short or hat combo with a logo. The second instance was a US Old Navy. I was wearing jeans, shirt, and my giant headphones. Another older lady asked if I work there. Nope, I don't work at a campsite or an old navy. Why do people think customers with headphones and work there? There are no workplaces that would allow you to jump to music near customers. Please correct me Reddit. Actually, I have been on some campsites where your description fits for their employees. Sometimes it is a family business and some of them are poor students getting pages for getting there at night. Usually camp owners are pretty much just regular people who get to stay at the campground for free. Hey, check out more I don't work here Reddit stories and look at all the nice videos I made for people just like you that enjoys Reddit stories. To support what I do here, subscribe to the channel, like the video and leave a comment such as a fire. My name is Spicy and I'm out.